So guys, this is a story sent in by one of you guys. So big respect going out to you. And also if you can, like, share, subscribe and comment. Guys, in this next news story, three teenagers who killed the father of two in Basingstoke and then laughed, rapped and joked about it have been jailed for a combined total of 90 years. Jadane Cartus, 18 of Basingstoke, Ismaila Kamara Jara, who's 19 of Basingstoke, and Cohen Daly, who's 18, all denied murder. Winchester Crown Court heard how officers were called at around quarter past 11 on Sunday the 22nd of May to a house in Musgrave Close in Basingstoke. Francis Ola was found inside with serious head injuries and he was pronounced dead in the early hours of Monday the 23rd of May. He had only just turned 31 years old. The court heard that he had been stabbed up to 20 times by the three defendants who had barged into his home and attacked him. A post-mortem examination found two wounds were caused by a machete or axe-type weapon. The court heard the men were shouting, give me the car keys, and later searched through kitchen cupboards before fleeing the scene. Sarah Jones Casey, who's the prosecutor, told jurors that Franstick and Carty knew each other, with Carty being in debt to Franstick for drugs. The prosecutor told the court, Jadane Carty, Ismail Kamara Jara and Cohen Daly arrived at Francis's door with an astonishingly short period of time he was lying on the floor of his hallway, just inside his own front door, bleeding to death from numerous stab wounds. They mercilessly cut him down with apparently little thought for what they were doing, whether they would be caught or whether others were likely to betray them. Their subsequent behaviour seems to suggest some may have even enjoyed the feelings of power or ruthlessness that appear to have possessed them and have revelled in the memories. The court heard that Carty, Kamara Jara and Daly were heard laughing after the incident and they even wrote twisted lyrics and recorded rap videos describing the murder. Carty, Kamara Jara and Daly denied murdering Franstick, but they were convicted by a jury. Appearing at Winchester Crown Court, Ismail Jara had been sentenced to life with a minimum term of 32 years. Jadane Carty and Cohen Daly had both been sentenced to a minimum of 29 years each. So guys, in the trial, it was heard that, well, according to Kamara Jara, that he went to Musgrave Close to restock on drugs, but did not know that a robbery was planned. He said that he planned to buy the drugs from Mr. Olaun's carrying more than £1,000 in cash. And according to Carty, he told the court that he worked for Mr. Ola as a drugs runner. Carty described Mr. Ola as a friend who'd regularly meet him at his home to help wrap drugs. He said after taking over the drugs line, he soon became in debt to Mr. Ola after breaking two of his scooters valued at £180 each and losing £2,500 worth of drugs, which was seized by police after they raided an address. In his evidence, Carty told the court that he felt under pressure by Mr. Ola and decided to rob him to show him he could not own him. On the night of Mr. Ola's death, Carty attempted to rob him at his home alongside Kamara Jara and Daly, armed with knives. Carty claimed he had no idea Mr. Ola had been stabbed and did not see any blood after the attempted robbery had taken place. On that day, the prosecutor asked him, What did you think they were going to do with the knives, your mates? Six for Ola with his child upstairs has three men bowering into him and you don't think weaponry will need to be used at any time. Carty told the court he didn't think there would be any need and said he did not want anyone to get hurt. Prosecutor then said he was wearing a white tracksuit but you say you did not see blood on the white tracksuit. You saw no sign of blood on a white tracksuit, how is that? Blood was also found on Carty's knife when he asked how he got there. He told the prosecutor, I don't know. Anyway, all three have been found guilty just want to say rest in peace Francis and my condolences go out to your family. Detective Chief Inspector Justin Dipper said this was a tragic and senseless act of violence that has not only led to a young father of two losing his life, but it has also destroyed many others including the lives of the three men sentenced today. Carty, Kamara, Jara and Daly went to Francis's house that night armed with knives. They carried out a sustained and brutal attack on him in his own home with his family present before leaving him to die. As always, our thoughts remain with Francis's family, friends and loved ones. Whilst we know nothing will bring Francis back, I hope today's sentence provides some measure of comfort to them at what remains an incredibly difficult time. I hope this case sends a strong message to anyone who chooses to carry a weapon or become involved in serious violence. No good ever comes from it. The consequences destroy lives forever. Parts of our investigation were particularly harrowing 
and I would like to commend my staff for handling the case professionally and with Frantstick at the forefront of their minds and thoughts. Our commitment to tackling knife crime continues and we are dedicated to working with partners and organisations to engage with young people about the dangers of knife crime and help divert them away from serious violence. So guys, here's another story with regards to a victim of knife crime. Now, there's two things that I want to mention that actually happened this week or I witnessed this week. However, what I'll do is I'll just mention one and then the other one, I'm sure there's going to be another stabbing story that I'm going to be reporting on. So I'll mention that in that one. But yesterday, I went to the city centre and there were two groups of lads who were having a bit of an altercation. And, and you know, we've all been in altercations and at the time when the groups are dispersing, you'll start shouting at each other or whatever and say, you know what, when I catch you, I'm going to bang you out or I'm going to knock you out or I'm going to smash you up. When these two groups were dispersing, one of the lads shouted from the top of his voice, I'm going to chop you up. Watch when I get you. I'm going to chop you. And I was with my little niece at the time. She turned around and says, he's going to chop him up. And I just said to her, ignore what he said. He's just being silly. But think about that. These lads, I'm telling you, they're not older than 14 or 15 years old. In the middle of the city centre, shouting, I'm going to chop you up. And I swear to you, when I was going down the escalators, I laughed at myself because I looked up at the group. Because when I had a look at the group, I thought, stick thin, fake Gucci caps, these big bomber jackets that were just drowning them. And I just thought, you're going on about choppers and all that. But then, I swear to God, if somebody was smoking a cigarette and blew the smoke out, they'd get blown away. Imagine Snoop Dogg being thin. They were half as thin as him. It's absolutely ridiculous but scary at the same time because people are not afraid to use knives. The thing is, look back in four or five years' time, the person that you want to stab you hate so much or you've had beef with or you've had an altercation, is it really that deep for a moment of madness or for your ego being bruised? You're going to want to chop up someone. Ridiculous. Guys, honestly, tomorrow, Saturday, go down to your city centre and have a look and see what society has become. It's an absolute pit that we're living in, I'm telling you now. So guys, with regards to this case that we just covered now, just to go into a little bit more of it. So these were the words of the partner who was at home at the time her fellow was killed. So she said she was watching telly or something and there was a bang on the door, not just a knock. So the victim went to the door, but then she heard an even louder bang and heard Mr. Ola shouting like he was in pain. She came through to the hallway and saw him lying on the floor with one of the men already in and two right behind. She described that the first intruder, who she knew to be Carty to be carrying a knife, described it as a Rambo knife. And she said she heard someone say something about give them the keys, but in fact, the car keys weren't even taken. And one of the girlfriends of the defendants also spoke out in court, and she stated that they all went for a meal after the murder, and Kamara Jara and Carty were making jokes and making fun of what had happened. And a taxi driver who was taking him back from the meal in Oxford, overheard a conversation where Miss Lee, the victim's girlfriend, rang accusing them of killing her baby's father and they were both laughing and chuckling and mocking her. These are the times that we're living in, guys. Absolute madness. It's your boy GC. Keep it locked. Keep it real.